Hello everyone, today we will talk about the layout design of nuclear medicine facilities. This lecture prepared by Professor Dr. Muhammad Bayoumi and myself, Dr. Islam Kamel. So let's start together to talk about nuclear medicine activity classification, imaging process, typical layout, classifications of areas, special preparation of rooms and, and areas. So we will start with classification of nuclear medicine facilities. Classification of nuclear medicine facilities or nuclear medicine departments based on ICRP 57. Here we are defining the category of hazard in nuclear medicine department. Depending on the weighted activity. Weighted activity means that you have to multiply the maximum activity administrated in uh, a certain facility okay, by two weighting factors. One of them depends on the radiotoxicity of used uh, radioisotope and the other one based on the uh, operation activity. So to uh, categorize or to uh, uh, to assign the hazard of uh, nuclear medicine facility, we have to multiply the maximum activity that can be uh, instantaneously present on the working area multiplied by two weighting factors. Okay, one of them re related to radionuclide and the other one is related to the type of uh, operation. As you can see here in the radionuclide weighting factor, you'll find we have different classes. Okay, class A, class B, class C, class E. Here you will find selenium, strontium, iodine 125, lime 131. Here you will find the weighting factor is 100. That means it has a higher, a higher radiation. In comparable with carbon 11, uh, nitrogen 13, O15, fluorine 18, uh, and magnesium 99M, you will find here weighting factor is 1. While if you are talking about xenon 3 or krypton or carbon 14, here is the weighting factor 4.01. So the radioisotope which uh, lower weighting factor that means it's it has less radiotoxicity while if we are talking about the radionuclide which has a higher weighting factor that means it has a higher radiotoxicity so we have to multiply the activity or the administrative activity by this weighting factor to uh, uh, to get the better uh, uh, classification of hazard of nuclear medicine facility here as you can see here you will find that based on type of operation or even the area of operation you'll find different weighting factors values here if you are talking about the storage where there is no uh, uh, the storage that means there is a storage of radioactive material but there is no operation there there is no person who is doing a certain work that's that means the weighting factor will be very less which is 0.01 why if we are talking about a radionuclide administration here you will find the weighting factor is one that means there is operation there is activity we are dealing with radioactive material with cert uh, uh, certain time so weighting factor become higher so now you know the idea about the weighting factor in different areas in different uh, 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 operation activity and you know the weighting factor with different radionuclides. So if you want to classify the weight, the hazard of any nuclear medicine facility, you have to multiply the administrative activity by the two weighting factors. So as you can see here in this slide, which categorize the hazard, as you can see, low hazard, medium hazard, high hazard. If you are talking about low hazard here, we are talking the weighting activity is less than 50 gigabecker, while medium hazard 50 to 50 gigabecker, higher than 50 gigabecker, it's high hazard. So this value coming from where you have to multiply the administrative activity at a certain area by the two weighting factor. So you can mention departments are usually in the medium hazard category except for facilities with regenerative light therapy and radioisotope production like cyclotron, which fall in high hazard category. Okay, so most of uh, uh, our nuclear medicine facilities, we are talking about medium hazard from 50 megabecker to 50 gigabecker, while for higher hazard only for cyclotron and high dose therapy.
OK. Here, uh, classification based on activity, as I mentioned before, you find sometimes a radiation lab in university hospital or used for, not for diagnosis purpose, but used for uh, research. We are using low level of radioactive material, low level of radioactive uh, activities. So at the time, it's, it's, it's classified as diagnostic nuclear medicine level one. So level one provides basic and general nuclear medicine surface. It will be appropriate to size this level of facility as the first department in an area that has a basic primary and secondary healthcare infrastructure, but perhaps not tertiary, like universal medical services. Okay, so if you are talking about the hospital or radiation lab in, uh, not in hospital, university, I'm talking about, sorry, I'm talking about univer university. So we are talking about lowest uh, uh, radiation level or diagnostic nuclear medicine level one. Here in diagnostic nuclear medicine level two, able to offer specialized in diagnostic nuclear medicine imaging, including cardiac oncological investigation, in addition to level one surface. At this level, more complex equipment like tomographic capability and the quantification infrastructure human resources will be required. In level three, you would operate at the highest level using complex equipment such as hybrid sing, single photon computer tomography, Spec CT cameras to perform a specialized investigation. This is the most resource intensive level. Here we are talk about another point which is called therapeutic. Now we are using radioactive material for therapy like I line one three one. Here also based on the uh, activity for therapeutic we have uh, we can talk about low dose therapy or high dose therapy. Low dose therapy it might be less than 30 millicurie. So uh, uh, and we are dealing with outpatient. Here the patient is coming just to take the dose and isolate himself at home. But if you are talking, this is in level one. So. And level one provides occupational services to administer limited amount of radioactivity to patients, relatively modest support with regard to patient isolation and waste management is required. Okay, but it's not a big uh, uh, it's not a big issue here because we are giving the patient low radioactive material less than uh, 30 millicurie. This is only for low dose therapy, for especially for iodine, I I one three one or even any other radioactive material with lowest activity, which will not require uh, 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 high uh, uh, isolation or long isolation time. But if you are talking about high dose therapy, uh, so therapeutic nuclear medicine level two, so we are talking about inpatients. Here the inpatient patient himself is isolating himself in our uh, apartment for 30 times, maybe three to five days, till we make sure that the permissible dose or the radiation exposure out, coming out from the patient is not exceeding or less than the permissible uh, dose limit. So at that time, we will permit uh, the patient to uh, to be released uh, out uh, the hospital. So that's why we are using the Zynatal Isolation Facility, and we have infrastructure will include uh, Zynatal Isolation Facility where the patient can remain for necessary period following administration, following administration of high activity radionuclide treatment. Appropriate radiation monitoring equipment uh, and protected waste storage areas are essential. Staff must be trained to administer high radionuclide activity in a safe way. Here we will talk about technical requirements for different hazard categories. As I mentioned before, category of hazard low, medium, higher. So we are talking about the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the special preparation uh, inside uh, each category. For example, floor, surfaces, film carbon, room ventilation, plumbing, or first aid. So if, I, if we talk about low, Hazards so floor should be cleanable, surface should be cleanable, so it would not require room ventilation uh, here uh, as a normal facilities plumbing here high standard. Uh, first aid uh, uh, washing is necessary in this case. So in medium hazard we are talking about this is the most important in your medicine facilities. So uh, uh, we have to make the floor non permeable or easily cleanable, easy to be cleaned and not uh, not uh, not allowing to any to be absorbed or to be absorbed inside the flow. The surface also should be cleanable. Film hood here is 
the theory, especially if we are talking about any volatile radioactive material. Uh, raw ventilation here should be good, okay, and plumbing here should be standard. First aid, old washing, and decontamination facilities. It's highly required here for any spillage decontamination or personal uh, uh, radiation uh, uh, decontamination as well. Okay, so I give you an example now if we are talking about construction standard for PET CT unit, including the following. So now flooring shall be adequate to meet load required. That's very important to make sure that your floor uh, has, uh, is adequate to, uh, uh, to, the, to, uh, to carry or to, uh, to uh, is adequate for the overload of uh, our equipment. Our equipment might reach to 6,000 kilograms, so at that time it's very heavy, so we are dealing with heavy equipment, so our floor should be uh, adequate to uh, bear this uh, uh, weight. Floor walls should be constructed of materials that are easily decontaminated. It's easy for any spillage decontamination, mission might vomiting or something like that, or any spillage or any drops uh, going out. And so the floor walls should be easy to be decontaminated in case of radioactive spills. Walls should contain necessary support system for either built-in or mobile oxygen vacuum. Uh, that's important for any patient, for anything happen. We can, we have to, uh, we have to provide the oxygen support or uh, 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 helping the patient for uh, to save his life in case of uh, any emergency. Other point which is important: provision of for cable trays, ducts, or uh, conduits uh, should be made in floors, walls, and ceiling as required. Uh, ceiling height should be a minimum of uh, three meters in scanning room which is important because you will find the machine height as well should be uh, uh, and a machine height should a machine has to be contained well in uh, in the scanner room and uh, three meters is uh, three meters uh, enough uh, enough distance uh, to include the machine and also to give enough space for movements for maintenance so uh, that's important and should be considered in the constructions. Typical facility, typical pet uh, facility rooms or typical rooms. Okay, if we are talking about, if we are thinking about the layout or the design, or you as the expert uh, in medical physics, if someone asks you, uh, we need your advice or your consultation regarding nuclear medicine department or pet city uh, uh, facility. Uh, so you have to think like, you have to think about the design. The design, so there are uh, uh, there are important rooms should be there. There are uh, uh, cold zones, there are uh, 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 hot zones, there are filter zones. So you have to consider that in your design. Cold zone, filter zone, hot zone. Hot zone or cold zone where there is no activity, there is no radiation activity, the places where uh, uh, we are receiving the patient, like reception area, like a normal toilet, all this, it's like cold, it's, it's called cold zone. So if we are talking about hot zones, so, so these zones where the radio pharmaceutical preparation and uh, patient uh, uh, injection or uptake room or scanner room or hot toilet for uh, pet patient or for nuclear medicine patients, imaging room, radioactive waste and radioactive storage room. Uh, so you have to consider that any place containing radioactive material, so at that time it's called hot zone or containing patient who is injected with radioactive material, so it's called the hot zone. But the place where there is no radioactive material, there is no activity, there is no radiation there, so it's called cold zone. Well, so what about the filter zone and uh, changing room? Filter zone, this zone where you are moving from the controlled area to supervised area. So at that time you are moving from certain place to another place from the place which is hot to another place which is less which has less radioactive material like what if we are moving from hot lab after radio pharmaceutical preparation so we are moving from hot lab to another room to uh, uh, to uh, uh, injection room 
for example so at that time you have to move in a certain room or a certain area which cons which consider as a filter zone to detect if there is any radiation contamination or uh, uh, to detect the radiation measurements okay at that area so at the time it's safe or not safe it's positive or negative to move from the controlled area or from the whole zone to the other zones so it's called filter zone so uh, it's like a monitoring uh, system or so it's like a monitoring room to monitor the radiation level so here you, you have to put in your mind so now if i'm thinking about the layout of nuclear medicine i will think about i have to receive the radioactive material so first of all uh, all receiving the patient so let us think or let us make a uh, uh, a design like that okay so here here if you are thinking about this layout okay so you have to ask yourself what i need exactly if i'm thinking now how to design the layout for your medicine department so now i, I let's draw together uh, the layout or the proper layout okay for nuclear medicine facility so you have to know very well that you have you have station and you have radioactive material or radioisotope this patient comes to your department so this patient should be should come to your department. So should, 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 should uh, enter. So after the patient talking with the reception area and make a registration for the patient, this patient has to move to. Vital sign room. or doctor investigation to measure the pressure to measure a uh, blood sugar to be sure that the patient is able to do the scan after that the patient has to go to the changing room to change his clothes at that time the patient become ready so the patient will go to injection room after changing his clothes to put your cannula to be cannulated okay and to be ready for injection after injection the patient will stay there for a certain time maybe half an hour one hour it depends on the type of the scan so the patient will go to scan room okay so after scanning okay but in between here you need inside the injection room hot toilet this for the patient to, vo to avoid before uh, going to the scan after scan room the patient will come again to uh, 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 will uh, come again to uh, to the injection room to stay there to take the decision if the patient uh, uh, ready to leave the department or not. Okay, so the patient will come again to the changing room to change his clothes. So the patient will go to exit, enter exit gate, which is different from the entrance gate. Okay, so you have to. Uh, we have to consider this in our design. We have to get exit gate, which is different from the entrance gate. So the patient go to the parking uh, to uh, uh, take his car and to go outside the department. So now for the patient journey, you have patient has to come to our reception area entrance to go to vital sign room. So after that, we'll go to changing room to change his clothes. So we'll go to injection room. Okay, so we'll go to the scanner room. After doing the scan, the patient 
will come back to stay injection room to this exit decision so we'll go back to the changing room so we'll uh, exit from the department in this way so this is a patient workflow okay so if we are talking about the patient workflow will be like that so if we are talking about the radio stop workflow this is another point we'll talk about it now So now, if we are talking about the radioactive material, radioisotope, here's the radioactive material coming out from. So there should be a certain way for radioactive material entrance to enter our department. So here we see the radioactive material. Shipment, you have to check it. You have to make all. Uh, you have to make all measures, safety measures. You have to check the package. You have to save the radiations if there is any contamination. So after receiving the radioactive material, it has to be bagged and it has to go to the hot lab, where hot lab is the place where the radiopharmaceutical preparation there. So you have to prepare the radioactive material. So hot lab here, uh, it has to be uh, uh, close to the injection room or a dose administration room, and it's preferable to make a window here to give the dose through this window. Otherwise, you have to uh, put the, uh, the syringe or the dose or the radio pharmaceutical after preparation on a trolley or uh, a proper uh, a carrier syringe carrier to move from the hot lab to the injection room so it's preferable to consider that in your design to make the injection rooms uh, beside the hot lab room like and also for each injection room you have to put a uh, 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 hot toilet okay uh, which is uh, important for any patient to go for avoiding uh, before the scan so Okay, so in this is the injection room. So, and also you have to uh, uh, make something which is very important for any radioactive material. Waste room. This waste room is very important to be considered be because after preparation for all syringe, for all vials, you have to do that weekly. You have to discard all vials, your syringe, okay? And you have to discard it and you have to measure it, okay? And if it exceeds a certain value at that time, you have to keep it for a, a certain time, maybe 10 half-life. If, if we are talking about short half-life or 20 half-life, we are talking about long half-life or long uh, or higher activity so uh, waste room it's important to be uh, by end of the department and also if you have a generator so you can keep it in the storage room so that's important as a pathway for hot lab after decay so waste room it's discarded as a normal waste as a normal waste so all what I talk about now is uh, is important for pathway of radioactive material and patient uh, workflow as well. So here, as you can see here, this is our entrance. Sorry. Here's the patient come from uh, outside. Is a patient waiting area, so called room. Okay, so after that, the patient go to uh, this is a normal toilet. Okay, so uh, and this is a physicist technician room, doctor's room. All this should be in a in a low activity. It's away from gamma camera room. It's away from. Uh, radio pharmacy lab or a hot lab or those administration injection rooms so all these or reactive storage or decontamination all these should be away should be uh, in the zone where uh, the high activity so 
you have to consider that in your uh, uh, in your layout so also you have to put here a certain exit so after the patient going to the uh, uh, um, finishing the scan so you have the patient who have to go out from the department so now as you can see here you can find pros and cons for each layout for each design so you have to avoid uh, 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 the drawbacks of each layout zone uh, as as much as you can so it's not um, you have to compromise this and you have to consider this in your uh, uh, design so if we make something here now if I want to design you I don't want to say this is a perfect one okay but we can think together okay all what I need now I have to make Consider two important things. One of them is a patient. The other one is uh, 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 the other one is the radioactive material itself. So if I consider here, this is the reception area. Where is the patient room? Here also you have to consider normal toilet for the patient who is sitting here in the uh, 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 in this area. Will be in the right reception area. The patient come from this way. Okay, it will be the patient will be here in this area, in this area, in the reception toilet. This one is normal toilet. This is for relatives. This is for uh, a patient who is coming be, uh, before injection. At that time, security should be here, or reception has to inform the patient all instruction and inform the patient that there is a parking so you have to uh, bring your car at the parking area because uh, and the exit also should be exit of the department should be connected with uh, the parking area so after the patient after finishing the scan and the patient, ha patient has to leave so at that time we can we can guide the patient to go directly from the exit gate to the parking area and to take his car outside the hospital so that's important to be considered at the beginning so it's preferable also to be in your commencing department at the basement okay because uh, that's important to be close to the uh, the parking area to avoid to go through the left and to go down through the left so uh, my patient might, uh, might, might meet with uh, pregnant staff or Okay, so after that, the patient you can consider this area as a closing during the starting gate. Okay, so the patient after that has to go to vital sign room. vital room take the blood sugar pressure what weight and the height all these measures so and also should be investigation by a doctor and to determine exactly the type of the scan so after that the patient has to go to changing room okay so after changing his clothes the patient has to go to uh, uh, hospital injection or road administration room. Okay, so those administration room. Here, those administration rooms should be wide enough uh, uh, to feel the patient that he is comfortable, that there is no stress and it's prepared with a certain tool like oxygen uh, pump or uh, oxygen or uh, uh, dc uh, uh, or all uh, all tools should save the patient life that's important to be considered in those administration room as well so here those administration room it might be two rooms three rooms it depends on the uh, capacity of the department itself so it's preferable to make uh, near to the those administration room here's a hot lab okay 
and you can make here both rooms for storage and waste room and you have to make here the this exit and a certain entrance for radioactive material to come directly to receiving a shipment room so the radioactive material come from this way and this is the exit of the patient changing room and you can make make here in front of the chain is the, the injection room the scanner room and here you can make technician room and physician room or reporting room okay so you have to know i have to consider something from low activity to highest activity low to high those okay so you have to make a special entrance for radioactive material and also to store the radioactive material okay and uh, for the host lab and you have to make here one window from uh, uh, the host lab as much as you can to the those administration rooms should be closed enough okay to uh, to avoid any uh, radiation contamination and uh, because if you are carrying the syringe and those from the hot lab to uh, to a room which is away from the hot lab at that time uh, uh, any radiation uh, accident might happen or uh, any contamination might have easily happen in the department as i mentioned before that uh, those administration rooms should contain a hot toilet. Uh, otherwise, you have to you have to uh, you have to assign a certain place in the department as a hot toilet, which is uh, uh, only for patients, not never been used by uh, staff in the department. So you have to consider that for uh, for patient, and also you have to you have to bottle radiation signage, and you have to. Uh, uh, radiation warning there and you have to tell the patient you have to make flush two or three times after usage that's important to uh, to to discard or to remove any uh, or to avoid any radiation uh, contamination okay so you will find nuclear medicine uh, facility will have a nuclear out there are some general rules of, to follow as they informed you Patient toilet room should be uh, 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 should be considered, and also if you are thinking about the isolation rooms used for nuclear medicine for iodine therapy, there is another uh, layout should be considered because you have to as your nuclear medicine department should consider the hot lab and rooms which has uh, inside the certain toilet. This toilet is a hot toilet is used for the patient during the isolation period. At the same time, you have to also you have to consider here a, a, a nursing station in your department. This nursing station is very important, and to monitor the patient and to and also resting room should be connected with the CCTV camera, CCTV camera, okay, to monitor the patient and to check uh, uh, the patient uh, cases. That's important. Okay, uh, staff toilet is different from patient toilet, especially if we are talking about hot toilet for a patient okay as i mentioned before you have to consider separation between non-radioactive areas from radioactive sensitive areas radioactive sensitive areas like hot lab like uh, radioactive waste room like storage room uh, or radioactive storage room should be separated from uh, non-radioactive areas uh, uh, like uh, uh, reception area like uh, uh, physician room, technician room this should be away from the radioactive area also in nuclear medicine we, do, we, we consider the area where the workers or where the uh, radiation worker has to be there it's like hot lab room waste room or storage room or control room for the scanners it's a control it's called controlled area otherwise nuclear medicine is considered as a supervised area supervised area if we are talking about the, the area where there is a patient and there is a radioactive patient and the worker has worked together in the same place 
So that's why we, it's, co it's called supervised area. So if I ask me about the, uh, 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 the hot toilet or uh, changing room, or injection room so now we are talking about supervised area okay but if we are talking about control room of scanner even uh, control room of the scanner or uh, the scanner itself it's controlled area or hot lab is controlled area waste rooms controlled area storage uh, is uh, radioactive storage all controlled area okay mission of circulation should be as much as possible separated Okay, some staff functions may be located within the surface or in a component location that is shared with another surface. Offices and the old functions that are not directly involved with, with the process should be located outside of the radiation area. Okay, as I informed you, we should not mix without uh, uh, patient traffic. Radio pharmaceutical and patient specimens received from outside the department require access to the lab by a card or hand delivery. Specimens and, su and some radio pharmaceutical can be sent outside for use in other departments with radioactive waste are going outside for disposable. That's what that's that's why I prefer this room, which is uh, which has to be con uh, connected with a certain area to outside the department after decay, after uh, making sure that the waste is completely decay, so it, it has to be uh, it has to be discarded as a normal waste. Okay, here, here as you can see here in this picture, here is a dirty water. And exit here for the uh, uh, for the patient after doing the scan. Okay, so you have to design or you have to think in your medicine facility design, considering all what I mentioned before, considering the entrance and the exit of patient, entrance and the exit of uh, radioactive material. So, you, so to to main uh, uh, to main process or to main item should be uh, considered in your mind during the design of your medicine facility. The patient and radioactive material itself, the pathway of the patient and the workflow of the patient and the radioactive material pathway as well from receiving the radioactive material and receiving the patient and uh, uh, till the time you say goodbye to the patient, till the time you discard the radioactive material as a normal waste. So all this, as I mentioned, should be considered in the design of the nuclear medicine department. Also, you have to make sure that all toilets are uh, all toilets are connected with a decay tank storage, which is uh, important for uh, for uh, for waste management. You have to make sure that all hot toilets or effluent volume coming out from your commencement department. Uh, which contain radioactive material or a certain concentration should be connected with a whole the decay tank. This tank is important to uh, make sure that the annual limit intake or the activity concentration not exceeding the annual limit intake as per the local regulatory body, okay, local, local regulatory body. Okay, in nuclear medicine facility rooms for preparation of radio pharmaceutical consider controlled area, administration of radio pharmaceutical or hot waiting air rooms considered as controlled area, rooms for storage and decay of radio pharmaceutical imaging rooms, rooms for patient undergoing radio pharmaceutical therapy meet the criteria for controlled area and should be so designed. As I mentioned before, we can consider the only place where there is no patient, okay, as controlled area, but if the, this place is is, is allowed to uh, is uh, containing patient and patient uh, allowed to go inside like uh, in those injection room so at that time uh, it's considered as a supervised area not uncontrolled area okay uh, as I informed you, supervised area may include examination rooms, probes, corridors, and other areas where there are patients who have been administrated with radio pharmaceuticals. Okay, so a special preparation for rooms and areas. Okay, 
Uh, our reception area is access to the department. And this is a big wall of CDAs, a lot of traditional loading uh, for uh, bridgemen. We have to uh, fill the bridge and do a bridge of two commas. We have to be, uh, be away from traditional soldiers. Also, uh, all these installations will be legal. And thank you. Uh, here is the reception area. And the warning for breastfeeding for pregnant patient okay and for as for pregnant and for breastfeeding there are a certain uh, instructions should be given to the patient so uh, that's important to to be uh, there in the uh, reception area the entrance door should be normally kept closed that's important and open the necessary by staff an intercom or video system may be adopted. That's important. Intercom to uh, it's important to call the patient by intercom. No need to go and tell the patient to give instructions after injection. But intercom is very important to tell the patient. Please come to the uh, scanner room or please follow. Uh, be please come for the scanner. Please come for uh, for toilet. Please come to uh, uh, any uh, or any instruction should be given to the patient and it should be given through the intercom. And also if the patient need help or need to ask about anything, you can use intercom for this purpose. Outline should be located adjacent to patient dosing room as informed user. The active storage and the preparation area will be generally be equipped with shielded man manipulation cells. The transportation of radio pharmaceutical from the hot lab to the patient preparation room should be performed using shielding containers and trolley or special device connecting the hot lab within the patient preparation room for uh, uh, quality control. Also, as per the quality manufacturer practice, they recommended to make the quality control for radio pharmaceutical after preparation of radio pharmaceutical, you have to do quality control. So it's preferable to make another room for quality control to check the quality of labeling or labeling efficiency between the radioactive material and the pharmaceutics used. As you can see here, you will find different shapes and different uh, uh, companies, okay, and uh, which provide you with lead shielding material. As you can see here, this bench, which is uh, uh, manufactured by stainless steel to be easy, uh, to be cleanable and to be easy to, to be easier for cleaning. And this also, this cupboard, which is used a lead shielded cupboard, and you have to, uh, you can use it to store uh, some radioactive material, calibration sources, okay, and also other tools. So uh, here also this lead uh, L-shaped, L-shaped, uh, L-shaped block or, and this window is lead glass, which is uh, a, a, which a, which enable you to use uh, to prepare the radioactive material under this lead glass, and you can see the radioactive material, but at the same time protecting you from radiation hazard. And this um, also this, as you can see, this hole this for dose calibrator uh, chamber, and this motor for a dose calibrator to check and to measure the dose uh, of radio pharmaceutical. Okay, so this it's important to make sure that your hot lab is composed of steel or stainless steel material. Okay, easy cleanable. Also, the ground should be uh, composed of uh, manufacture from uh, 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 a certain uh, material which is it's easy to be cleanable and also uh, impermeable. So not allowing for any drops or any material to be absorbed inside. Okay, because this hot lab room is uh, one of the most common area for uh, spillage and radiation contamination. Also here you will find that uh, this one is cell, hot cell is used for uh, uh, for, PET CD, for FDG uh, preparation. And this one is very heavy, it's around 6,000 kilograms. So uh, we have to make sure that the floor can uh, carry this uh, weight. And also, also this is also here, you can see on the right side is a fume hood. Okay, and this is lead glass to prevent the radiation coming out from inside to outside. And this room hood already is uh, connected with a ventilation system, okay, which uh, uh, which discard any radioactive uh, vapors or radioactive uh, airs outside and prevent any dust or any material come from inside to outside. So that's why the pressure inside is negative pressure, okay. Here in the hot cell of PET CT, also you have to make sure that the uh, 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 that the um, 
that you are wearing the anti-x apron. Anti-x apron used for uh, uh, to protect uh, against beta particles, uh, not against X-ray or gamma radiation. Okay, because of many other years beta particles, you have to protect yourself from uh, beta particle uh, during the preparation. Also, tungsten syringe can be used, which is uh, which has a high high. Uh, atomic number and high density so it can be used uh, instead of lead in shelving the, uh, the F18 which has a higher energy 511 kilometer volt with uh, lower thickness uh, than uh, lead material. Here as you can see here this is uh, patient uh, dosing rooms and this is our hot lab here Okay, so uh, hot lab here is near to the patient dosing room for, and this window can be used for transferring the radioactive material from the hot lab to the patient dosing room. And also this QC room, which is considered to be separated from the hot lab, okay, for uh, as a good manufacturer practice the line, so it should be separated for the pharmaceutical preparation, especially if you are dealing with a high radioactive material like F18. Uh, and this is the filter zone, as I mentioned before, this is important to check the radiation when you are going from the hot lab to other areas, okay, should be checked if there is any contamination happening, in the, if there is any contamination, and uh, and this can be done by using foot hand uh, contamination detector or also a, a, a area monitor to check if there is any radiation uh, or uh, personal uh, contamination happen okay in this area before going to supervise the area or any other rooms okay here as you can see radio pharmaceutical administration room you'll find this uh, uh, here you'll find spillage uh, or not spillage is waste pen which is important this lead is composed of lead material you can remove this cover easily okay this is the cover and both here the syringe cannula everything related to the patient or any absorbent sheet and this lead it should be fixed here and to protect from uh, to protect uh, or to prevent any radiation to be going out and expose the worker uh, uh, and uh, if the uh, uh, if the, if this waste pen reach to uh, two-third the amount, two-third the full amount of the waste. At that time, we have to discard it and we have to measure and we have to put it in the waste room. And to keep it for some time till it reach uh, background radiation. Okay, there is a different shapes and different uh, design. All of them it has to uh, bring this chair, which is very comfortable to the patient, and uh, which is important to to be checked also by end of the day to check if there is any contamination happened during uh, those administration or uh, patient release. Thanks also all things things should be connected with the hot lab. Thanks. Uh, it's very important to be composed of stainless steel material, which is uh, non-absorbent material, and also it's more easy to be cleanable. And uh, also, this water make dilution and discard any radioactive material. And also, in case of personal contamination, you can use warm water and soap to remove any uh, uh, any uh, radioactive uh, radioactivity from your hand at that time. So, uh, if the regressive body allow the release of aqueous waste to the sewer, a special thing shall be used. Local rules of for the charge shall be available. The thing shall be easy to do contaminate. Special flushing units are available for diluting the waste and minimize the contamination of the thing. Also, as well, all this uh, uh, drain or the, this, uh, this thing uh, should be connected with the decay holding system or decay holding tank, this tank which keep the radioactive material for a certain time till we assure that the concentration activity uh, 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 per, it, uh, concentration activity not exceeding the, or uh, concentration activity is lower the permissible limit. So at that time we can discard it to the main sewage. Okay. So uh, this decay hole tank should be monitored by area monitors or additional area monitor to know the concentration activity inside. Washing facility, it's important also to use washing facility, wash up sink, should be located in the dose preparation area and adjacent to working area. And also uh, taps should be operable uh, without direct hand contact and uh, disposable towels or head air dryer should be available as well. 
Bisham toilets that's important. Bisham toilet it's important to be used only for patient, and we have to guide the patient to uh, use uh, flush two or more or two or three times after usage. Okay, uh, and also this all, all these hot toilets should be connected with uh, tank uh, tank decay system or holding tank, uh, as I informed you before. As I informed you here, the facility should include a sign requesting patient to flush the toilet well and wash their hands. Include a wash up sink as a normal hygiene measure. Be finished in a materials that are easily decontaminated, that's very important. Consider wall mounting sanitary where, uh, where so uh, that the floor is completely clear. Resting room. Resting room is the room after injection we can uh, make the patient to stay in a certain uh, room which is called rest room or holding area which has to be monitored with CCTV camera okay and also be finished in the materials that are easily decontaminated lies that can be uh, uh, that can be done uh, should be quiet area should be separate area for each patient as well if you are talking especially if you are talking about FDG patient because FDG patient is important to stay in a quiet area which uh, because any noise any uh, stress area it will affect on the FDG by distribution inside the patient body here dispensing area be finished in materials that are easily decontaminated and be tidy as well in case of personal decontamination or in case of personal contamination, the actual decontamination is again to be a shower which it has to be in the hot in the hot lab or near to the hot lab. In case of personal contamination, you have to take a shower to remove any uh, radiation from uh, radiation spilled from uh, your body. Okay, so now radioactive waste storage area this uh, has to be there in the department must be incorporated into or adjacent to pet city facility or it's near to the also you will find that in inside the scanner room inside the injection area inside the hot lab waste pen waste pen is lead shielded okay to contain any radioactive waste immediately in case you are injecting the patient and they use the cotton use the cannula your syringe or so you have to put all of them in absorbent sheets in a waste pen after that you have to by end of the day or when this waste pen be full okay two third from the full amount at that time you can you have to carry it to the you have to move it to the uh, waste pen okay to be to check that the reading of uh, or the dose rate uh, is lower the background level of radiation. If it's higher than the background radiation, we have to record that and we have to keep it for some time, okay, uh, uh, maybe around 10 half lives of this type of radioactive source, okay, so after it decay and reach less than 5 microsievert per hour, so you can discard it as a normal waste. For example, here, let's see for the patient in this patient because it takes no time for decay because uh, uh, FET in short half life for example 10 minutes uh, in comparable with potassium 99M which is 6 hours so that's why FET is easily to uh, uh, to decay and reach background radiation. Here I'm informing you delay holding can connect you to the bathroom in the bed city facility if you require from form local regulatory agency, some uh, local regulatory agent asking to do holding tank, holding EDK tank, uh, which has to be connected with, uh, uh, with all uh, water drain or all toilet things inside the department. As you have to make sure that the concentration activity gone out to the main floor is not exceeding and use the annual limit intake. You can also use a reference IA uh, technical enhanced document 1714. Okay, this reference is very important. You can use it for dank in the case of calculations. If the bed facility is located within New York Medicine Department, this can be simply accomplished by connecting the bed bathroom to the delayed holding tanks of the New York Medicine Department. 
as an informed you you will find that also certain containers like that these four sharps and this one for non sharps and this one for long life radio isotope and this one for long life uh, long isotope this one for sharp and this one for non sharp in non radioactive waste so you are different containers inside the department one for sharp one for non sharp one for long life sharp one for no long life non sharp that's important okay you have to keep the sharps separated from uh, the non sharp like the searing pod itself but sharp should be uh, separated and also we have to keep the non radioactive waste alone okay away from the radioactive waste all of this should be uh, and also there is, a, there is a certain waste tank as you can see here okay which uh, contains the radioactive material there is another uh, also if we are talking about uh, radioactive material short half life waste for technician file here for gallium 67 or thallium 201 you can use this pin for long half life and this pin for short half life but for iodine as iodine is a beta emitter so you cannot you, you cannot use high density material but you have to use this waste pin which line inside with the specs or low density material and from outside with the material so we have to be careful about that in in case if you are dealing with iodine 131 you have to use to buy you have to use searing field or you have to use waste pen which line inside by the uh, the prospects or low density material and the outside with high density material also in the diagnostic room in gamma camera or pet CT room the floor floor should be leveling well that's important for mechanical stability of the machine and also uh, it, it has to be covered with a certain material which prevent uh, uh, the permeability of any radioactive spillage or drops and uh, and also the height should be enough as I mentioned before three meters to be enough for the machine height and for maintenance for any issue all cables should be here in the ceiling should be above uh, uh, should be above and should be embedded inside the ceiling itself not from outside and not affecting on the fielding uh, of the uh, fielding material or the construction of the ceiling itself. It has to be noted that some equipment may require a lower fan rate or longer fan rate in the floor. As well as floor should be accurately leveled to be out of all the problems of misalignment. That's important. The floor and load should be carefully considered. Uh, the floor should uh, should be able to uh, carry the machine weight that's important okay also radiation uh, signage should be everywhere even with the shipment or shipment coming from outside the department this shipment should be shaped okay and we will talk about that in another uh, lecture okay how to chase the radiation package coming from outside how to chase the transport index the activity radiation sign testing data all documents related to the position package itself to make sure that you are receiving the correct one okay okay we'll talk about this one later in next lecture okay also ventilation is very important we have to use fume hood or uh, fume hood also is important in case you are dealing with iodine 131 it decays quickly with 100 plus degrees so this one this is a gas which is uh, is uh, which is inhaled by patient or by uh, staff might cause problems so we have to discard all these gas using uh, fume hood. this fume hood has a connection with the ventilation system okay and sometimes using carbon filter here which absorb all remaining gas inside so this one is connected with with the serving tube which is uh, connected outside the building itself to discard all the xenon gas so that's important if you are dealing with iodine 131 to make sure that you are you have a few mood and you got ventilation system to discard the iodine gas okay especially if you are going to uh, this uh, uh, if you are going to uh, give the patient a capsule or give the patient dose using the iodine capsule at that time you have to remove the cover for a certain time to discard all uh, all xenon gas okay uh, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes before uh, before uh, uh, before administration of the dose Okay, that's important. 
doing that, especially if you are going to uh, hold or you are going to touch the vial containing the radioactive material, you have to use uh, these uh, uh, forceps, okay, and uh, to keep a distance away from the radioactive source because it's a Peter emitter, so it might affect on, uh, it might give you, uh, might affect or might increase the radiation exposure to your hand. All the pen should be, uh, all surfaces should be covered by surface, uh, by blue sheets or sheets or absorption sheets, and also floors and walls and pen should be easy flammable material. This absorption sheet is very important for any radiation contamination happened during uh, preparation of radio pharmaceutical. For storage, you can use these lead bricks, which is most commonly used to store the radioactive sources inside and to prevent any radiation exposure outside. And also, this uh, uh, this storage or this uh, build, this structure, you can use it, and you can make it handmade. Should be customized, or you can uh, order it from uh, different companies uh, over the world. And uh, you can you can make it handmade. It's okay. It's it's working well. And uh, it will be less uh, less costly. Okay. Regarding ventilation, which is very important, okay, to remove or to discard any uh, uh, any, uh, any radioactive labels that come out of the material preparation, uh, you will find you have to change the air inside the open thermal. Any vapors might contain some radioactive material which has to be changed in the house or has to be uh, thrown out or has to be uh, carved out the room. Uh, that's why we have to use the air, we have to use a good ventilation system with a negative pressure, which enable us to remove the air uh, 15 to 20 times uh, uh, per hour in case of you are, you are dealing with a hot lab in the room of the hot lab, uh, even you are using it for therapy or diagnosis, or a thick room or a thick room therapy six to 10 times, controlled area six times, uh, filter zone two times. So it depends on the activity of radioactive material uh, inside the room itself, you have to change the air inside. Also, cooling and ventilation system will be required for scanning room and the surgery computer because cooling system is very important in mandatory in case you are in case the scanner room because at that time it might affect on the crystal efficiency. So any change in the temperature it might cause the crystal uh, crystal fracture, especially if you dealing with PET system or gamma camera. Uh, as I informed you, you can use carbon filter, okay, to remove or uh, uh, to remove or to absorb the radioactive material or the radioactive flavors which come out from radio pharmaceutical. Uh, that's why the open air uh, form uh, the hot lab uh, must be filtered very well and it cannot be uh, recirculated. This is very important that there is not be recirculated and go inside again. The ventilation conduct to the hot lab must be separated from the remaining ventilation system or be a separate part. Okay, there are two points here. As I mentioned before, that hot lab has to be negative pressure. That means uh, uh, that means uh, a volatile contamination within the hot lab should be discarded or uh, should be discarded outside uh, the hot lab. But in good manufacturer practice guidelines, you will find that to avoid the entering any hazard or dust or uh, or uh, vapors from outside to the hot lab should be hot lab should be positive pressure so we have now a problem okay because you want to expel or expel the volatile and at the same time you have you want to prevent any dust come from outside to inside so that's why we have we have to use a special filter this special filter has a something which is called uh, chimney this chimney okay uh, uh, this filter should be connected here with the hot lab as you can see okay uh, 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 this uh, this filter okay with a chimney has a negative pressure to remove the potential radioactive real contaminant okay in, uh, which is produced inside the hot lab okay and uh, uh, and uh, this only filters is used to remove the 
to remove the contaminant or the volatile contaminant from the hot lab okay and at the same time you will uh, 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 and and will prevent this filter will prevent at the same time to enter any uh, 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 any dust or any vapor from outside to the hot lab so using this using this filter it's important to uh, to maintain the pressure gradient uh, from the hot lab to the filter zone, which will impede the access of non-treated uh, air uh, towards the hot lab, and at the same time will allow the, ex uh, the expulsion toward uh, a controlled exit of radio contamination. So, all this in your mind. So, using a filter is very important, and uh, a sort of chimney with negative pressure should be connected with this filter. Also, our guidelines and our references you can use it like IAC standards, uh, irradiation protection and safety in medical use of ionizing irradiation, uh, um, SSG uh, 46, and ICRP publication 140, radiological protection and therapy with radio pharmaceutical, and the IA Human Health Series uh, 37, uh, New Commission Resources Manual 2020 edition. And also the guide for nuclear medicine substances, laboratories, and nuclear medicine rooms, GD52. You can use uh, it's published already in 2010. So you can use all these references in your design of nuclear medicine facility. Thank you so much, and uh, uh, inshallah, in the next session we'll uh, we'll uh, try to uh, talk in deeply about the operation inside the nuclear medicine department. Thanks.